The Falcon F-16 V3 is a fusion of creative design and meticulous engineering. Now that The Falcon F-48 is a fusion. Hi, welcome to Canna Spader Christmas. This video is sponsored by Pixel Controller LLC. So, yep, that means a new Falcon controller. Now, I received this board and connected it up, played with it for a little bit, and then it hit me. This thing is going to be a game changer. This is a hammer. This is a hammer. Which one's better? It just depends on what you want to do with them. Similarly, this is a Falcon controller, and this is a Falcon controller. Which one's better? It just depends on what you want to do with them. We'll take a closer look in just a minute, but here's the deal. There, there's no fuses on this board. There are no expansion cards for this board. In fact, there are no pixel connectors for this board. So technically, it's really not a pixel controller. It's a differential controller. Now, the pixels are connected to these little differential receiver boards. And I'll let you think about that for just a minute. The board has 12 differential outputs. The differential receivers have four ports, so that's 48 ports total, hence the Falcon F48. Now, it supports up to 96 universes, and it supports a wide variety of popular pixel protocols. Like I said, when I first got this thing and started playing around with it, I connected it up to a five volt wall wart that I got from Amazon. I'll include a link in the description. Uh, I connected up one differential receiver to a 12 volt power supply and connected a 12 volt string of pixels and then connected another differential receiver to a five volt power supply and connected up a string of five volt pixels. So if you are all 12 volts or five volts, no problem, but I still recommend either marking your pigtails well or using some other method so you can easily tell the difference if you're running multiple voltages. Now, you don't want to plug 5 volt pixels into 12 volts, otherwise you'll just burn them out really quickly. 12 volt pixels into 5 volts, they either won't work or at least they won't look right. Now, the thing with this controller is that you can have this main board in a central location by itself or, you know, next to your computer. You can run up to 75 meter standard Ethernet cables out to the receivers. So that means that the power is closer to the prop, which will probably solve a lot of power problems. At least they will for me anyway. I know some of you have expressed a desire for this kind of setup, so this board really is a game changer. Now, the differential receivers are sold separately, so don't forget to order those when you order the board. If you have some that you ran with the F16 V3, they'll still work with this. Differential receivers have a 30 amp voltage input connector. The input voltage can be 5 volts or 12 volts DC. Each output is rated at 5 amps. Differential receivers support 3 wire pixels only, so it'll only be an issue if you have 4 wire pixels. They just won't work with these. You'll have to run those off your Falcon F16 V3. So the top half of the F16 V3 is very similar to the top half of the F48, with a few minor differences. So let's take a closer look. The controller receives E131 ARTnet data on the shielded Ethernet connectors on the upper left side of the controller. It's essentially a two-port switch. 
Only one connector is used to bring data into the controller. The other connector can be used to pass or daisy chain data out to another controller. The micro SD card slot can be used to update the firmware on the controller. A micro SD card is inserted with the notches in the card toward the bottom of the controller. This is a friction slot, so it's not spring loaded. Push the card into the slot to load the card. Pull on the card to remove it. This slot will also be used as storage for sequence and audio data while the controller is running in standalone mode. That feature will be supported in future versions of the firmware. The four analog connectors allow for the use of current sensors or triggers. They will be supported in future versions of the firmware. The audio connector will accept an audio board capable of producing high quality stereo audio on an analog 3.5 millimeter jack. The F48 has four dedicated RS-485 serial circuits that are made available via three serial output ports. These are typically referred to as the DMX output ports. The DMX1 jack has all four serial circuits available. DMX2 only has serial 2 data, and DMX3 only has serial 3 data. Each serial circuit can be individually configured to output DMX, Pixelnet, or Renard. The DMX protocol can also be used to drive LOR boards. If you need to use these ports, consult the user manual for configuration and pinout information. There are two options for powering the controller itself. The F48 is powered by a 5 volt DC supply capable of delivering 3 amps. You can either use the 2 pin connector on the board at V2 or an AC adapter. The organic light emitting diode, or OLED, displays controller information and can be used to make some changes to the settings configuration. It shows the controller has booted up, run mode status, and several other useful pieces of information. The function buttons are used in concert with the OLED to walk through the menus. The battery slot underneath the OLED accepts a CR1225 battery and powers a real-time clock chip while the controller is powered off. The battery can be inserted or removed without removing the OLED. The clock chip will be used for a standalone mode and will be supported in future versions of the firmware, but there's really no need to install a battery at this time. The Wi-Fi module in the upper left corner of the controller will be supported by future versions of the firmware. There are three LED status indicators near the center of the board, the leftmost LED is the power status indicator and will be green when power is applied to the controller. The center LED is LED 1 and will be solid green when the controller is in run mode. The rightmost LED is LED 2 and will be solid green when the controller is in test mode. LEDs 1 and 2 will flash green when resetting or updating firmware. There are 12 differential output ports, each capable of driving a 4-port differential receiver. The board itself does not have any pixels attached. Standard Cat5 or better Ethernet cables up to 75 meters in length are used to connect differential receivers to the F48. The cable transmits data only and will not power any pixels connected to the differential receiver. Pixel power is provided through the power input connector on the differential receiver. It accepts 5 volts or 12 volts DC and should match your pixel voltage. You cannot mix voltages on a single receiver board. An RJ45 jack is used to connect a differential receiver to the differential output ports or one of the serial output ports on the F48. Do not connect a differential receiver to an Ethernet connector, such as ETH0 or ETH1 on the F48, as this may damage the controller. There are four pixel output ports on each differential receiver. Each port is protected by a 5 amp fuse. The new differential receivers have indicator LEDs on them, but the old ones don't. They both work. 
The output is dependent on which device and jack the differential receiver is connected to. Consult the user manual for more details. If the F48 is connected to a network and your computer is on the same network, you can access the web interface by opening a browser and typing in the IP address of the controller shown on the OLED display. The status page is the default web page, shows general information about the controller, lets you put the controller in test mode or run mode, and allows for loading or saving the controller's configuration to an XML file stored locally on your computer. E131 Packets Received information shows the number of packets coming into the controller for each of the defined universes. This table is useful when troubleshooting strings that aren't lighting properly. The Network Configuration page allows for viewing and changing the network connection settings. These settings are also available via the OLED display. The E131 ArtNet page is used to set or change the configuration of universes the controller will listen for. The String Ports page allows for configuring the 48 pixel output ports. For each port, you can set the pixel protocol type, the universe, start channel and pixel count or string size, direction, color order, and brightness. Each column of the differential outputs of the 12 outputs on each board shares a total of 1024 pixels. This slider allows for configuring the number of pixels each row is allowed to support. Using the arrow keys on your keyboard allows for fine-grained adjustments. Once you've made changes to this page, Press the Save button to save your changes. The Serial Outputs page allows for configuring the DMX output ports. You can change the mode, type, address, baud rate, and stop bits for each of the four serial circuits. Changes made on pages in the web interface are not automatically saved. You must press the Save or Restart Interface button to apply changes to the controller. Consult the user manual for more details. So this is what I meant by being a game changer. We now have two similar tools. If you have a large concentration of pixels, you may want the Falcon F16 V3. If you have props spread out all over the place, you may want the Falcon F48. I think most of you will prefer the F48, especially if you're just starting out, because it's something you can expand as your show grows. Now, if you have more than like 50,000 channels, I'll just assume you know what you want for a given situation. And both of these controllers are excellent controllers and I highly recommend this brand. One last thing, if you are new to Pixels and want to come up to speed quickly, I do have an online course that covers everything you need to know to get a show up and running. It actually walks you through planning out your display. It's at least 24 lectures. I may have added some by the time you see it. Uh, and it's about an hour and a half in length. I'll include a link in the description. I hope you found this information useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs